When it comes to rocket development, everything about it is very difficult. It's a field that demands extreme precision, cutting-edge engineering, and a deep understanding of physics. But the most important and most difficult part of a rocket is its engine, because it determines the rocket's ability to leave Earth, travel through space, and reach distant destinations like Mars. The efficiency, power, and reliability of the engine dictate not only how far a spacecraft can go, but also how quickly and safely it can complete its journey. Right now, SpaceX's Starship is the most powerful rocket ever built, designed for deep space missions, including carrying humans to the planet Mars. At the core of Starship's design is the Raptor engine, a next-generation full-flow staged combustion cycle engine that runs on methane and liquid oxygen. One of its biggest advantages is its use of methane as a fuel, which is not only more efficient than traditional refined petroleum number one kerosene, but also capable of being produced on the planet Mars through a process called in-situ resource utilization. This means that future missions could manufacture their own fuel directly on the planet Mars, using local resources, eliminating the need to transport large amounts of fuel from Earth, which would make interplanetary missions much more feasible and sustainable. The Raptor engine is a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine, a design that no operational rocket engine before it has used successfully. In this system, both the oxidizer are fully gasified before entering the combustion chamber. This results in more complete combustion and higher efficiency compared to gas generator cycle engines or open cycle staged combustion engines where some propellant is lost as unburned exhaust. The full flow design significantly increases the engine's efficiency because it allows for higher chamber pressures, meaning the engine can extract more energy from the propellant. The Raptor engine operates at an extremely high chamber pressure of about 330 bar, which is 4,800 pounds per square inch far higher than other rocket engines, allowing it to generate tremendous thrust while maintaining high efficiency. For comparison, the rocket engines known as RS-25 engines used on the Space Shuttle and currently on the Space Launch System have a chamber pressure of around 206 bar, which is 2,990 pounds per square inch. SpaceX has been continuously improving the Raptor engine through multiple iterations, each bringing enhancements in performance, reliability, and manufacturability. The first-generation version of the engine was called Raptor 1, which powered the early test flights of Starship prototypes, including the high-altitude hops conducted in the years 2020 and 2021. This version introduced the full-flow staged combustion cycle technology in an operational rocket engine, but had several limitations in terms of complexity, manufacturing cost, and efficiency. The Raptor 1 engine produced approximately 185 metric tons of thrust per engine and operated at a chamber pressure of about 270 bar, which is around 3,900 pounds per square inch. Its specific impulse was around 330 seconds in vacuum and approximately 290 seconds at sea level. However, this version had a shorter lifespan than later versions and required increased maintenance after each flight. Raptor 2 is the second-generation version of the engine, featuring increased thrust, higher efficiency, and a much simpler design compared to Raptor 1. This engine powers the latest Starship prototypes and is expected to be used in the first orbital test flights and beyond. The Raptor 2 engine produces approximately 230 metric tons of thrust per engine and operates at a chamber pressure of about 330 bar, which is around 4,800 pounds per square inch. It has slightly improved specific impulse compared to Raptor 1, and its design has been significantly improved to simplify plumbing, reduce the number of parts, and incorporate more robust materials. There is also a vacuum-optimized version of the Raptor engine, known as the Raptor Vacuum Engine, which is designed specifically for operation in the vacuum of space. This version features a larger nozzle to maximize exhaust expansion, which increases efficiency when operating outside of Earth's atmosphere. The Raptor vacuum engine produces approximately 258 metric tons of thrust per engine, and its specific impulse in vacuum is about 380 seconds, compared to 330 seconds for the sea-level version.
These engines will be used on Starship's upper stage to efficiently propel the spacecraft once it has left Earth's atmosphere, allowing for better fuel efficiency and higher speeds during long-duration space missions. However, despite Starship's incredible power and innovation, it still relies on chemical propulsion, which has some major limitations. One of the biggest problems is exhaust velocity, which is how fast propellant is expelled from the engine. This directly affects the rocket's efficiency and the speed at which it can travel. The reality is that chemical rockets, no matter how powerful, will always have a limit on how fast they can push a spacecraft through space. To get to Mars, a spacecraft needs to travel about 140 million miles, depending on the alignment of the planets. Using Starship's chemical propulsion system, this journey would take six months or longer. And that's a huge problem. Six months in deep space present serious challenges for astronauts. They would be exposed to cosmic radiation, which can damage DNA and increase the risk of cancer. They would also experience microgravity, which weakens muscles and bones over long periods. NASA isn't happy with this long travel time. That's why they've been working on something far more advanced than chemical rockets, a propulsion system that could potentially cut the travel time to Mars in half or even reduce it to just a few weeks. NASA is developing a new type of engine that could revolutionize space travel, nuclear thermal propulsion. This engine doesn't rely on chemical combustion like Starship's Raptor engines. Instead, it uses nuclear fission, the same process that powers nuclear reactors on Earth. A nuclear reactor onboard the spacecraft generates extreme heat by splitting uranium atoms through nuclear fission. This heat is transferred to a propellant, usually liquid hydrogen, which then expands and is expelled through a nozzle to generate thrust. This method is far more efficient than chemical propulsion. A nuclear thermal rocket has nearly twice the specific impulse compared to chemical rockets. That means a spacecraft powered by nuclear propulsion could reach Mars in just 45 to 90 days instead of six months. The reason nuclear thermal propulsion is superior comes down to energy efficiency and thrust. Chemical rockets like the Raptor engine have a specific impulse of about 450 seconds, while nuclear thermal rockets could reach 900 seconds or more, meaning they can produce much more thrust using much less fuel. Reducing the journey to Mars from 6 months to 45 to 90 days means astronauts will spend less time exposed to dangerous space radiation and microgravity. Nuclear rockets also use hydrogen as a propellant, which is much lighter and allows for greater efficiency. One major safety feature is that the nuclear reactor will remain inactive until the spacecraft reaches a safe orbit. This prevents any potential nuclear contamination on Earth in case of a launch failure. While nuclear propulsion offers incredible advantages, there are still some challenges to overcome. The nuclear reactor will operate at extremely high temperatures, so engineers need materials that can withstand these conditions without breaking down. Hydrogen is the best propellant for nuclear rockets, but it's difficult to store because it requires cryogenic cooling to prevent it from evaporating. Many people also worry about radiation and safety, so educating the public on how nuclear space propulsion is safe and well-controlled will be key. If NASA's nuclear propulsion technology is successful, it could completely change how we explore the solar system. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.